This is Forever Blue. I'm Ian Cheeseman, XS Manchester 106.1 FM. Tell all your mates, tell all the fellow blues that Ian Cheeseman is with the legend that is Paul Lake tonight on 106.1 FM. Lakey, you did that Churchillian speech last week, which everybody loved and was saying that you should be on Sky TV. Obviously, I would completely agree with them. <laughs> you should be, but thank goodness you're not. Thank goodness you're with me, being really selfish. But it worked. You, you, it, did they hear you? I'm sure they did, Ian. I'm sure they did. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, last night, Stoke, um, in the end, uh, I mean, I know we're starting to sound like we're taking it for granted, but it was fairly routine and straightforward, that, wasn't it? Well, yeah, it was, uh, but it, again, you know, because back to how Pep Guardiola approaches every single game and makes the players approach every single game as if you know it's the first game of the season and it's about three points and they were so professional so organized and again you got Raheem Sterling coming back from injury as if he'd never been away and 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 that's testament to the players that are around him too Ian but all in all it was a very professional job done last night. Do you get the feeling now that other teams are actually starting not perhaps every team but teams like Stoke are starting to step out on the pitch and are actually intimidated before a ball is kicked. Well, you, no one looks forward to a night of chasing shadows, do they really? And you know it's coming. Unless you know, you're you, Cliff Richard. <laughs> you're not going to get on the ball, are you? You're just not. So you know you're going to be doing so much work, you know, not being able to apply your trade that you're, you're going to be a, a bit part in a game, even at home. And there's a frustration to that. It's about emotional control as well, Ian, about having to try and do a job when you get those those chinks in the arm, those moments where there's a misplaced pass or a, mi- a miscontrol, which, as we know, doesn't hop- happen very often in Manchester City when you're playing against them. But when it does, be able to capitalise on that and still stay positive in the right frame of mind to be able to deal with it. And, and teams on the whole, aren't equipped for just that very thing. And as a consequence, and you see how hard City work, you know, out of possession, it's, it's breathtaking, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's almost a given. And for teams to be on the front foot defending when you give the ball away, it's not just a reaction. If it was a reaction, it'd be one player. But it's four and five players every time. So the Stoke players know, and other teams will know, they're going to get one or two opportunities to try and do something with the ball. They've got to try and keep it. They've got to use it intelligently and effectively and quickly because they're going to get pressed. And all those things culminating mean that teams will struggle to try and deal with that and end up more often than not giving the ball away. I thought their crowd as well last night were fairly quiet because obviously City scored very early on. But there was always that sense that if they'd have played well, if they'd have scored a goal, if they'd done something to encourage the crowd, which they did in little flits and starts in the first half, that they would have come alive. And whilst I'm sure City's players would have more than dealt with that, they're used to it and they're going to have to deal with it in the latter stage of the Champions League. To me as a fan watching from the sidelines, I thought I'd rather keep their fans quiet and not let them get any momentum. And that's exactly what City did and 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 really there was none of that surge of the crowd in the end was there no there wasn't you're absolutely right and everyone talks about going to Stoke on a Monday night you know in the the wind and the rain whatever that might be didn't really apply to City last night not just because of Stoke's predicament but because of the nature of how we approach the game because again Ian you look at you look at teams will say okay let's watch uh United let's watch Liverpool let's watch Tottenham and we'll see how they play you know but but City you know I talk I always talk about it you know not to find a different answer they change the question so in terms of you trying to adopt a high press medium or a low press and try and change how you play, try and stay now or try and go man for man because of the quality and the fact that every player has got three or four options. I mean, how many times do we see Vincent Kompany uh, and uh, Nicholas Otamendi, you know, They'll, they'll pass a 30 yard diagonal, you know, into the opposite pocket to get David on the ball, to get Kevin on the ball. And that's don't watch the eyes time. But that's, that's been done time and time again in training. And as the Sky pundits and BT's pundits have always, you know, sort of reiterated this, is that the work on the training ground is so meticulous and it's so involved. No stone is left unturned by Pat Guardiola. He's almost manic with attention to detail. But it means that teams just don't know how to second guess how City will over over overcome a particular style of defensive play. They've always got an answer to every single question. 
Absolutely. Well, we've got a few more questions for you, a few more subjects I want to discuss. I also want to tell you what's coming up. Uh, around about 20 past, we're going to be speaking to Tony Colton, former City goalkeeper, who, of course, spent some time at Old Trafford as a goalkeeping coach. But you and I, Lakey, both know that his heart beats blue. Yeah. He's very much a City at heart, and uh, and he, he never chose to leave City, although I think some fans have the wrong perception of that, but he's definitely mm-hmm. a big blue. He'll be talking to us a bit later on. Right, anyway, let's get back to, the, to uh, City. Um, I want to ask you about David Silva. Now, we've talked about David Silva before. It's, it's hardly rocket science to start talking about him as this great player. But I can't help feeling that he's actually getting better, despite the fact that this season we know he's had to deal with personal issues with his son back in, in Spain and, and him, him being born prematurely and now thankfully getting stronger as he goes along, as David himself says. Mm. But he's had to juggle that. He's had to juggle flying backwards and forwards. And yet he comes back and... He is just sensational in every game. His work rate seems to be higher than it's ever been before. Mm -hmm. Suddenly he's now the prolific David Silva because he's starting to bag great goals. Um, And and I'm just seeing a player here who deserves to be in contention for every honour going, apart from winning the trophies, but yet it always seems to be overlooked. And Is it because of his personality? Is it because he's, he's so modest and so quiet because he doesn't really speak an awful lot? Do you understand why David Silver is not noticed outside of City fans more? In previous uh, seasons, uh, you know, all I can all I can glean from that that pers- from a perspective of goal scoring is that as a number ten, you tend to be one of those like an Edin Hazard who's maybe playing in in that pocket or someone who's going to be scoring goals because you know in previous seasons and David has scored goals by the way, but not anything like as prolific you know, and as consistent as he has been this season. That's the only thing, Ian, because if you think about it, he now is, for, for me, he's, we all know he's world class, but he, he has become. We all know. Yeah. That's the point. Yeah. Do they yeah. all know? I, I think, well, I mean, I've, I've spoken to, uh, to colleagues at, at work who are across London, you know, the North East, South West. They all regard David Silver as being a world class footballer. And they're, they're fans of Tottenham, Arsenal, whoever, and they say he's world class. But you know, when you talk about Tottenham, we, we go, as soon as you said Tottenham, we'll go Harry Kane. Mm-hmm. When you know, when you go to United, it might be Pogba or it might be Lukaku. When the when those people talk about City, do they go David Silva or do they go Kevin De Bruyne and Sergio Aguero? Is he just one of the group? He is one of the the kind of the godhead. You see, you have to include uh, Sergio and Kevin De Bruyne in that group. As many good players as we've got. He literally is now. He's seen as the not not just the this the sort of seasoned, experienced individual that he is. He's been there a long, long time. Uh, but no, it, uh, as being that world class individual, and he's got to the stage now, in where this season he's become that Galactico, where when he crosses that white line, you know you're going to get a game changing performance. Ninety nine times out of a hundred, it feels that's how it feels. The presence that he walks out onto the pitch with, not just when he uses the ball, but you know he's got physically stronger. He's far more aggressive. It's almost like the football pitch now has become his outlet for all of his his, his anxieties and his woes and his angst about family matters, having to travel to Spain and back and this, that, and the other. It feels like his way just to release all that tension is on the football pitch, and won't be tired anybody who comes up against him. And that has been the case. He's been an absolute revelation because he's always been good he's, he's been lots of former players and fans favourite player always been my favourite player but like you say there Pep Guardiola has found a way to just to just to add bits to his game that have meant that he has now got that consistency he's got that presence and it's almost like the, the City football team are using far more components of their brain in 90 plus minutes of football and as a consequence, it's giving David more options. But if you watch him, as the case in point was last night, it almost feels like, and this happens to world-class footballers, it's as if they're playing in slow motion. And people are so afraid of trying to you know, commit themselves to try and win the ball because the way that he's placed the ball and positioned his body means that if you try and take the ball away from you, he's just going to move the ball past you, make you look silly, but also get beyond you. Therefore, you've got even more chance of conceding a goal. So everyone's so reticent to try and you know, press him and really, unless they're going to foul him, to try and commit to challenging him because they know that he's got that many pitches in his head. He knows what passes he wants to make and he'll make it nine times out of ten 
the right way to pass at the right time to create a goal scoring chance and his movement now as you said Ian there is just second to none where it's so intelligent that he knows when to add a gear just to be able to get that half a yard in front of somebody as was the case last night he didn't go too early he didn't go too late he went when he needed to go just to be able to get that right time to relax on the football and go and finish it and that's how he's been the latter half of the season in particular he has been the most consistent most prolific prolific and the most exciting of footballers that City has seen alongside Kevin De Bruyne in, in many a season. Given that we are waxing lyrical about David Silva, but we've also in the past talked about the importance of Fernandinho, who you and I are no big yeah. fans of. Yeah. Kevin De Bruyne, we can't question the, the, the quality that he's got. Mm. Sergio Aguero, and actually we can go through lots and lots of players. Vincent Company was yeah. back yeah. to his best last night. Edison, I mean, but I could name all 11, frankly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, we've seen these statistics, I'm sure you've seen them like I have, that David Silva is on this unbelievable run of when he starts a game... City win the game, mm. and without even knowing that statistically, that that statistic instinctively, I feel as if if he's absent, if it, it what, what I'm trying to get to the question I want to ask you is that whilst you know you don't want to not have Kevin De Bruyne in your team, you don't want to not have Fernandinho in your team, etc., etc. Is David Silva the single most important player, the one that is the hardest to replace, the one that makes the biggest single difference? I think in terms of presence at this moment in time, this juncture of the season, I think is enabled Kevin De Bruyne just to try and settle a bit because there's been a lot of responsibility on his shoulders to be that player, you know, in, in a team full of greats, to be the go-to player game in, game out for quite a period. It was it was Kevin. And now uh, David Silva has taken that on to give him a rest. It's my turn now, mate. You know, you look after everything else and I'll be that, that go-to player. But, you know, let's not forget, I mean, there were points in the season where, for instance, I went in Napoli, for instance, you know, he didn't start, he came off of the bench. You know, and that was one of the most, you know, uh, challenging games of the whole season. So put it into perspective, geez, you've got so many quality players who are doing their job. And I love Vincent Company's comments after the Carabao Cup final where he said, I didn't know I was going to be playing, I get asked to do my job and I'll go and do it. Because if I don't do it, I'm not going to be in the following week or even to get a chance the following week. So the tempo, the intensity that Pep Guardiola has created has meant that players have stepped up. But some players have stepped up and have stayed there. And David Silva is on a different plane to, I would suggest, the majority of footballers in the last 10 seasons in the Premier League. Should he be PFA? or Football Writers Player of the Year? I think he's got a very good chance. A very good chance. But but again, you know, it, it also depends who's going to be voting for that because you've still got the competition from uh, from Salah, uh, from Harry Kane. You know, it depends who's going to vote. I mean, Kevin De Bruyne has been sublime this season. But there's almost like a recognition, almost like a tip your hat to, to the King of Spain because that's who he is. It's a moment in time. He is the player. I suggest in the Spanish national team as well, he is regarded that highly. You know, he is the player that when you want the ball to be kept, when you want the game to be slowed down, you want the game to be quickened up. You know, he controls the graphic equaliser of our, of our team, doesn't he? At this moment in time, it's been in the past, it's been Fernandinho, it's been, it's been our Kev, but at this moment, you've got to say David Silva is the go-to player for Man City and we are so lucky to have him. You must have a story too, Lakey, about TC. Yeah, it's quite a few stories, but well, <laughs> got to be careful. No, I mean, in terms of, uh, of TC, is uh, what I mean is me, Brighty, you know, all the lads. He was the safest, safest hands in soccer, is what we used to call him. I don't know whether he knew that or not. You know, the fact that he had the coolest warm up, you know, on the planet, you know, and he was all chilled out and controlled. But he was the most what did he do? What, there was very, out? very little. Just bounced the ball and caught it in the changing <laughs> room, but focused. But when he came out, you'd never know that because he was just so consistent. His hands were, were, were solid, you know, with great communicator, great presence. You know, he had a, a, a great left peg. And, and ironically, we were obviously going to catch up around Ed, Edison and around TC's thoughts on Edison because TC had a bit of a wand himself. That left peg of his was, was quality, so much so that he was always one of the first picks in the five sides, unlike the cat, who sadly, a great guy as, as the cat is, Andy Dibble, he was probably the last pick. I mean, obviously, I mean, City have had some great goalkeepers, Joe Corrigan particularly, um, and Joe Hart recently. But and I'm not just saying this because TC's on, I've told him this before, but uh, I always, if, if you'd have asked me to pick an all-time City 11 of the players I'd seen, so we're not calling in Bert Troutman and we're not talking about Frank Swift because I never saw them, but TC would have actually been my goalkeeper. Yeah. But I'm beginning to wonder, I know it's early days, if Edison might actually pass him. Oh, 
could get past TC. But for now, TC is still the number one. TC, thank you for joining us tonight. Hello, Ian. Hello, Lakey. Hey, T. Very kind words, I'd say. Thank you very much. Have you got uh, have you got a radio on, uh, Tony, in the car? I'm in the car, I haven't got a radio on. I've good, got good, good. I'm, I'm just Joe's the technical wizard and he's saying, tell him to turn his radio down, I thought. He won't even have it on, he's probably listening to something else. But it's a sat nav, that, well, isn't it? Um, I'm not a techno whiz, but I don't know how you'd... How you'd um, listen, you, you rang me up and right <laughs> in the middle of a take, of, of a take that song when I was singing along to Relight My Fire and all that, so you've already spoken. You've already spoiled me now. Brilliant. Well, but we'll try not to spoil it too much. You, you, you as, a, as a blue, and I know you are a blue. I mean, I know you went to the dark side for a bit, but you are a, an absolute. You must be loving what's happening in the city at the moment. Yeah, I, t- I tell you what, I am. I'm loving it because um, obviously my time there. We, um, although we we finished fifth, fifth and ninth, really under Peter Reid, and would have had European football if it hadn't have been for the for the um, the ban in Europe for for our clubs. Um, you know, those supporters that have were th- that sort of supported us um, through um, the dark days, so to speak, uh, and I'm still friends with today, I'm pleased for them because it's been hard for them over the years, I've been watching Man United win trebles and doubles on a consistency basis, you know and, and um, you know so um, I'm really pleased for them that they're having a taste of um, the good times you know. Yeah I know and, they, and I know you identify with them a lot and all your mates, like you say, are blues and obviously a uh, lot's been made at the moment out of the possibility of City could win the league against United um, you, you've sort of had a foot in the dark side camp. They're not going to want that to happen, are they? Well, certainly not. You know, um, you know, I don't know. Listen, Jose Mourinho. Um, you know, he, for what for whatever's going on at, at Man United at the moment, he is a winner. He's been there. He's a proven winner. He won't want that. The club won't want that. It's certainly uh, under Sir Alex. That, that wouldn't have happened, um, you know. But um, listen, what a better place for Man City to go and win the league. And, uh, and obviously, Lakey wants to talk to you. I know in a second. That's like, let me introduce this subject then. Uh, Edison, who I'm suggesting, oh, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, could actually end up be better than you eventually. Absolutely rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, it's t- it, it took a little while, hasn't it, to um, uh, to get one in and, and certainly to fill the criteria that Pep wants, you know, somebody that can handle the ball out. Um, like like he said, we're all, we're all frustrated centre-forwards. Um, and, um, you know, but this, this, this lad's in a different, um, a different league. He's um, coolness personified, you know, uh, playing out. So I, I thought the best one was Manuel Neuer um, playing 20 yards outside his box and bringing things down on his chest and playing out wide. And But this this fella's different class, you know, and um, for somebody, I think, what, what is he, 24? Is he 24? I, I'm Something not sure. Something like that, yeah. Some, yeah. Somebody for 24 that's going to be around for a long, long time uh, in, in the in the sticks for, for City. Um, he certainly um, listen. I don't know. I didn't. The, the tell me, Bert Chapman was an absolute um, um, top top keeper. I, I was unfortunate. I didn't see Bert Chapman, and I have to take everybody's word for that. But um, this fella's on a different level for me. He's um, he fits all the criteria. And when they go on about um, good with his feet and playing out and good distribution first and foremost you've got to keep it out of the net and he does that as well uh, and he does it very very well so um, you, you've got the you've got the, the full package there yeah, I'd say, yeah, I mean, obviously looking at your days when you when you were back at United, you put a lot of pressure on Peter Schmeichel and he had to be at that level because you were breathing down his neck. You know, do you, do you feel that, that in terms of where City are at now with Claudio Bravo, in the, in recent games he's he's been far, far better. He's been far more, far more competent. But do you believe that you've got to have two goalkeepers at that level to be able to, you know, withstand the real challenges of Premier League football, Champions League football these days? 
Yeah, I do. I, I, I do like it. Um, and listen, for whatever reason, um, you know, when I when I left City and when I joined United, that was one of the big things that Sir Alex Ferguson said to me. He said, um, you, "You're coming here," he said, "because Peter hasn't got anyone to keep him on his toes. Um, he's missing training. You know, he's, there's an edge gone to his game." He said, "By bringing you in," he said, "I believe it was the it was '96, the season that they caught Newcastle. You remember?" Kevin Keegan Rant and he said to me he said look you might be lucky like Les Sealy get in the team uh, and if, if you get in and you, and you do well you know I'll keep you in um, but Peter just took his game to a new level as soon as I walked through the door um, and I always remember after the after the, they won the double at the cup final Sir Alex coming up to me and saying um, just because you haven't played doesn't mean to say you haven't played your part and, I, and he didn't have to say that but um, that was the measure of the man and he did um, so um, yeah, I do believe um, that that is the case. You need um, two top top uh, top keepers at your club just to. And I, I, there, was a, there was a saying. I think it was from um, from uh, Roger Federer, and I think it was when he was world number one. He said, "To remain as number one, you train as you're a number two. That means you're always striving to get that number one spot." Um, and I, I just think that um, the only way that Edison's form would drop is if there's nobody pushing him. So, um, answer to your question, a bit long-winded. Yeah, I do believe you need two two top keepers and somebody to keep them on his toes. Yeah, no, thanks for that, T. And also, T, you know, we talked about uh, you at Sir Alex Ferguson there and being one of the 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 the, the greats of, of of world football. His successes in Champions League and the Premier League, you know, it goes without saying. So, in terms of that comparison. Looking at Pep Guardiola now, T, do, do you see lots of similarities in how they manage the environment? Yeah, I think um, listening to different people inside Man City now that see it on a daily basis, I've got a couple of contacts that work there that, you know, uh, and it'll be like yourself, you know, you, you try and suck every bit of information you can to say what makes the guy tick, what makes him special. Um, first and foremost, I believe he's a workaholic. You know, he's in early, he works late, he does all his attention to detail. Um, that might be the analysis of the opposition. Um, it might be, um, you know, play, player acquisitions, um, where they're going to go next and planning ahead, which is one of um, Sir Alex's uh, big, big fortes. Um, so there are similarities. Um, the, the style of football that he insists on and he's stuck with it, um, you know, it's come a cropper uh, a couple of times in his career, but um, he's stuck with it. What, what I will say, um, uh, like Ian, this is not having a go at him, he's been at some of the biggest clubs in the world with the best players, so that that certainly helps, doesn't it? You know, when you're at Barcelona, Bayern Munich and Man City, um, that's not taking anything away. He's a top, top manager and apparently an absolute pleasure to play for. You've highlighted different aspects of what he does that make, makes him special. In the modern game, and obviously you've experienced managers at different levels, including arguably the best manager that has been in this country in Ferguson, um, it is managing at that top level about man, man management and motivation as much as anything else? I mean, because the way he seems to get the best out of individuals is, is what impresses you. Every, every single player at City seems to be noticeably getting better under his jurisdiction rather than either standing still or going the other way. Listen, the first and foremost, and, and Lake will tell you a bit, is, is you treat your players like men. Um, and, and that's what Sir Alex did, and they, this is what Pep's doing. Now, um, w what is hard when you're managing at that level is managing egos. And let me tell you, there'll, there'll be some massive egos in that dressing room, um, each one of them saying that they should be first on the team sheet. So, um, you know, you, that's why you see rotation of uh, players. Um, you know, and and so part and part of that, it's not just the tactical, um, you know, a, 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 of a manager, his acumen of a, a, for a manager. It's it's his man management. He's keeping all those big, well-paid stars uh, happy, you know, and. Um, and um, that's what he seems to be doing there. He's got a harmony. He's got a togetherness. 
um, with those players. Um, that's evident when you see them, when they, when they all celebrate together uh, and you see it, um, you know, and they all suffer together if, they, if it, on the rare occasion there's a bad result. Um, and that's what he's brought to to that um, to, the, to, to Man City. He's brought that togetherness, he's, and um, you, you can see that. So, um, and I believe his man management style is it just it, it's not just with the team; it's with um, the support staff uh, that, that, that travel with the team. It's the people in and around the training ground, um, you know, which is which is. Um, which is invaluable, really. You all want the same result, then. Nobody would dispute a word of what you're saying, Tony, because it is all about togetherness and, and whatnot. But Lakey and I have been speaking about da uh, David Silver a little earlier on. Looking from the outside, as you do, is there, is there one player, is it David Silver, that is the key, if there is such a thing, a key player at City, or is it about the whole group? No, listen. Each team will have, um, uh, uh, you know, the the ones that stand out. You know, two or three, or uh, maybe the same player week in and week out. You know, but um, um, David Silva. Um, I think I read somewhere today that probably won't get in the um, the the, um, the best eleven in the in the league, or he won't get nowhere near Player of the Year or stuff stuff like that, which is a crime because he's. Um, He's a fantastic player, and he has been a fantastic player for City for a number of years now. Um, you know, but um, um, if you were going to ask me to pick an individual, um, then um, I'd be hard hard to pick between um, David Silver and uh, Kevin De Bruyne. Um, I, I think they've been inspirational in that in that team this year. Tony, really thanks did. very much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers, Cheers team. Much.